A very good morning to all my dear students. Myself Ankita Dubey and I welcome you all once again to another session of chapter 9 The Earth Our Habitat. Students in our previous video we discussed about the shape and location of the earth, right? And in today's session we will learn about the motions of the earth. So, without wasting time, let's get started. Students, you must have noticed how in the daytime the sun shines brightly. It illuminates everything. Here you can see how the clouds are getting the light of the sun. You can clearly see the cloud here and at the same time the sunlight is falling on this house and slowly it's moving away. The sun is moving away from us. It is planning to set down and finally it's evening. So what exactly happens during this time? In the daytime the sun shines brightly and suddenly at night where does it go and leaves the moon for us? What exactly happens between day and night? Or what is the difference between day and night? Or what exactly is the change that happens between day and night? That sometimes we see the sun in front of us and half of the day the sun is not there at all. And then again next morning it comes back. Well, that is because our earth is not standing stationary. It is rotating all the time. Okay. So students, like other planets, there are two motions of the earth. Number one, rotation. And number two, revolution. Now, let's look into each of them in further detail. Students, as the top rotates on its axis, in the same way, the earth also rotates on its axis from west to east direction. This circular motion of the earth is called daily motion. It is also called the rotation of the earth. The speed of the rotation of the earth at any point along the equator is approximately 1670 km per hour. The earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. So students, our planet earth rotates like this and it rotates from west to east. So you can see that how all the countries and continents are constantly rotating and changing their directions. That's because of the rotation of the earth. Students, when the earth rotates, it's not exactly upright. In fact, it's tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees, as you can see in the image. And if we draw an imaginary line in that tilted direction, then this imaginary line is called the axis of the earth. The tilting of the earth on its axis causes varying lengths of day and night. Students, due to daily motion of the earth, day and night occur. The earth is round, so the sun rays fall only on half of it at a time. The other half remains on the other side of the sun. The earth rotates on its axis, so its different parts come opposite the sun alternately. Students, every part of the earth experiences light from darkness and darkness from light in every 24 hours. So students, as you can see in the image, half of the earth is getting the sunlight while half of it is not getting it. Because half of the earth is facing the sun while 
the other half is in the opposite direction it is not getting any sunlight and that is why there is day and night the part facing the sun will have day and the part opposite to the sun will have night i hope it is clear to you students now we will discuss about the second motion of the earth and that is revolution but first we will understand what is an orbit students as you know that the earth rotates on its axis similarly the earth revolves on a fixed imaginary path this imaginary path is known as an orbit so the earth rotates on its axis and it revolves on its orbit is it clear so don't get confused between rotation and revolution the orbit of the earth is not round but elliptical in shape elliptical means oval all planets also move around the sun in fixed orbits each planet has a different orbit students the second motion of the earth is revolution the movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution the earth revolves from west to east in the anti clockwise direction students the earth takes 365 days and 6 hours to revolve around the sun that is why a year has 365 days students it is very important to note that we consider a year as consisting 365 days only and ignore 6 hours for the sake of our convenience because it is difficult to calculate 1/4th of the day so in order to compensate remaining 6 hours are added to the month of february every 4 years students 6 hours saved every year are likely to make one day over a span of 4 years we add this surplus day to the month of february every fourth year february is 29 days instead of 28 days this year with 366 days is called a leap year students the earth's axis is always inclined in the same direction at an angle of 23.5 degrees to the vertical this inclination of the earth's axis together with the earth's revolution around the sun causes seasons do you remember what is the earth's axis the imaginary line around which the earth rotates is known as its axis students the equator divides the earth into two halves known as hemispheres in position a the northern hemisphere is more tilted towards the sun than the southern hemisphere thus in this position the northern hemisphere is hotter and experiences summer meanwhile the southern hemisphere experiences winter students in position b the sun's rays fall directly on the southern hemisphere while they fall on the northern hemisphere in a slanting manner thus the southern hemisphere will be hotter and it will be summer there meanwhile the northern hemisphere will experience winter students let's understand the meaning of equinox equi means equal and nox means night equinox is the time when all the places on the earth have equal duration of day and night each year on 21 march the spring equinox the sun shines directly on the equator 
Again, on 23 September, the autumn equinox, the sun shines directly on the equator. Students, solstice is the time when the sun reaches at its highest or lowest point at noon, resulting in the shortest and the longest days of the year. The summer solstice in the northern hemisphere occurs about June 21, while the winter solstice occurs about December 22. The summer solstice is the longest day of the year and the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. Students, the term Uttarayan is derived from two different Sanskrit words. Uttara means north, Ayan means movement. The earth revolves around the sun with a tilt of 23.5 degrees, right? The direct rays of the sun shift from the south of equator towards the north of equator is called Uttarayan. Now, you will think that why do we celebrate Uttarayan on 14th January? Well, we celebrate Uttarayan on 14th January as it is the day on which the sun begins to rise in the Makar Rashi. It is also known as Makar Sankranti. Students, the complement of Uttarayan is Dakshinayan. From 22 June, the direct rays of the sun shift from Tropic of Cancer towards the south of equator. It is called Dakshinayan. Students, as we all know that the earth along with the other planets revolves around the sun in its orbit. In turn, the moon revolves around the earth in the moon's orbit. But there comes a time when the three heavenly bodies get aligned in the same straight line. This is when an eclipse occurs. On the earth, we witness two types of eclipses, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse, also known as the eclipse of the sun. It occurs when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth. As a result, the moon blocks the light of the sun from reaching the earth's surface and casts a shadow on it. This occurs on a new moon phase. We can observe up to 5 solar eclipses per year. Lunar Eclipse Also known as the eclipse of the moon. It occurs when the earth comes in between the sun and the moon. As a result, the earth blocks the light of the sun from reaching the moon's surface and casts its shadow on the moon. It occurs on a full moon day. We can observe up to three lunar eclipses per year. Students, here I end the explanation of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed learning about our planet Earth, right? As it is an interesting chapter. Students, that's all for today. We will meet with a new chapter. Till then, take care, stay healthy and keep learning.